this video is about sleep. And the first thing that you'll notice is that there are no screens in this room. Bedrooms are for sleeping and other recreation. But having a TV or any other screen in your room is one of the most anti-sleeping thing that you can do. Trouble sleeping is a very common thing that I see in my practice. And for the most part, occasional trouble sleeping, no big deal. Every once in a while, the moon is full or we had a big day or whatever, we have trouble getting to or staying asleep. But if you're having trouble sleeping on a regular basis, that is a sign that something is not working correctly in your body. Sleep is when we do our rest and repair. It is really, really important that we get a good night's sleep because that's when our body is doing all the housekeeping. And if the housekeeping isn't being done because we're not sleeping, well, that's not good for us. One of the first things that is important is your sleep hygiene. And what does that mean? What are you doing prior to going to bed? Screen time. If you're on your screens, then you want to turn them to warm and or, and hopefully or, turn them off at least an hour before bedtime. You can you know, take a warm bath, you can do some gentle yoga, you can read, you can talk to your loved ones, something that is low key and is going to start to bring you down. Do not underestimate the power of natural light. So when we get up in the morning, there are cones in our eyes, and those cones are looking for a particular spectrum of light. That spectrum of light, you know, the pre-dawn, the dawn, or early morning, is waking our body up. It's signaling our circadian rhythm that there are certain things that need to be happening now that we're awake. And the other side of that is that as we get into our evening, we need to be seeing the natural light. We need to look out, go outside or, or look outside and see the dust because that also signals to our eyes to participate in the circ circadian rhythm that is so important for all of us. If you have chronic trouble sleeping, that would suggest that your nervous system is overstimulated. Now, an overstimulated nervous system means you probably have a lot of excess cortisol, which means belly fat and a lot of other things that are not necessarily good for the body. A lot of people don't recognize that our nervous system is easily overstimulated by too much caffeine. A lot of us have caffeine each and every day on a regular basis, and some of us have a really lot of caffeine. Caffeine is a stimulant to your nervous system. If you drink coffee every day, then I highly recommend trying a three-day caffeine fast. It's really good for you. You will be surprised when the fourth day when you drink your customary cup of coffee, you're going to be speeding because your body will have cleared out that need for caffeine. Yes, you might get a headache, things like that, but... Caffeine is a tool that you can use to give yourself energy when you need it, but if you use it on a daily basis, it becomes a lot less effective. Once you've gotten a handle on your caffeine consumption, or however you want to handle that, then the other thing you want to do is, and even if you don't get a handle on your caffeine situation, you want to calm your nervous system on a regular basis by using some calming nervines, some calming teas. So my favorite is chamomile. And you can get chamomile tea just about anywhere. I like getting the bulk herb so I can make it more strongly than what I might get in a tea bag. Chamomile tea is really restorative to the nervous system, but also so is lavender, oat straw, Tulsi. There's a lot of really great calming teas 
the great thing about chamomile is it mixes with just about anything. You can make chamomile ginger, you can make chamomile mint, you can make chamomile tulsi, you can make chamomile lemon balm, etc., etc., etc. Just so many things that go well with chamomile. So what else do we do if we have trouble sleeping? This is one of my favorite solutions. This is a homeopathic called Coffee Crudea. And yes, it is a homeopathic version of coffee. When you have that, whether it's in the middle of the night or going to sleep, when your mind just keeps going and going and going and you cannot shut it off, three of these pellets under the tongue, let them dissolve, and that will shut down your brain and help you to sleep. Lavender is one of my faves. I always have lavender essential oil around and lovely. And you can just, ah, don't do that. Lavender is one of my favorites, and you can just sprinkle a little bit on your pillow or wherever you would like. You can put it directly on your skin. Lavender is one of the few essential oils that you can put directly on your skin with no harm. Lavender on your pillow every night will eventually get you to the point where you're automatically, your nervous system says, ah, lavender, I should go to sleep now. When things are really tough and you just can't get to sleep, I wouldn't recommend using this more than once or twice a month, but if, read all the cautions and everything, but valerian root is my favorite sleep herb. I make my own, I tincture my own from the um, dried root. But valerian for some people can have the opposite effect. So if you're one of those, maybe 10% of the population that has a reaction to valerian that is the opposite of what you want, you may find yourself up all night. So I would try valerian once, like on a night where it doesn't matter a lot, just to make sure you know how it affects you. Sleep is so important and it's something that we really want to reclaim our ability to sleep. Now some people thrive on six hours, some people thrive on nine or ten hours. Whatever your baseline is, getting that sleep is super important. Now I'm going to say something that is usually a little unpopular, especially with men. If you co-sleep, if you are sleeping with a partner, then I would recommend that at least once a week you guys sleep separately. The reason for that is even though you may not know it, when your partner rolls over or snores or whatever, it's bringing you a little bit more towards consciousness and it may be keeping you from that deep, deep sleep. It's also, it's just good to be clearing your own field, to be alone, sleeping. And when you do this, especially if you're a, a mother, then you want to do it so that the room you're sleeping in is sacred. Your children, your partner, everybody knows on that one night a week, you're in that room, you can go in that room as early as you want, and you stay in that room until you want to wake up. And that is a way to manage if you have one of those lives where it's just not practical to do all the things that you need, know you need to do to get that sleep then at least once a week you know you're getting that full good restorative night's sleep so sweet dreams happy sleeping please like subscribe and share below and get the book see you soon